Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, and we're going to be looking at the social risk. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. Now, the social risk is, in my opinion, a very interesting indicator because it, it tells us whether people are net coming into the space or leaving the space, right? So for instance, if more people are, are coming into the cryptoverse than leaving, then we would expect the social risk to go up. As you can see, like we saw back in 2020 and, and early 2021. But at some point you reach a tipping point where there are more people leaving then coming into the cryptoverse. And when that happens, of course, the social risk goes down. Now, in this case, the social risk is made up of five different metrics. That includes YouTube subscribers to crypto YouTube channels, YouTube views to crypto YouTube channels, Twitter followers to various crypto analysts on Twitter, to exchanges on Twitter, and to layer ones on Twitter. And... In addition to all of this, we account for the fact that from one cycle to another, or as a function of time, the, the base grows, okay? So you could think about it as like the fair value, the, um, you know, the, the regression model of it to non-bubble data, if you will, but the fair value or, you know, what it should be based on just increasing um, you know, increasing adoption over time, we've accounted for that. So when we look at the social risk, we're not expecting it to go to the levels in terms of YouTube views that it was at back in 2018, but we might expect the social risk to be back to the zero to 0.1 wristband. For instance, if you were to look at the YouTube views chart, this is what it looks like, right? So this is, is you know, total YouTube, or, you know, new YouTube views for all these crypto YouTube channels you see down here. I'm not expecting YouTube views to go back, you know, to only 4,000 or something a day, right? It, it, would, it would likely be nonsensical to assume that that is a likely outcome. But it would be fair to say that we have been seeing lower highs and lower lows on this metric since, you know, since early to mid-2021, and therefore the social risk has been dropping, right? So when everyone is tuning in to watch, it means the risk is high because at some point you reach a level where, you know, no one new is going to come in. So whoever's coming in, they're here, right? At, at these mania phases. And then as people leave, that's where the altcoin reckoning takes place, right? And that's why you see the Bitcoin dominance go up. You like how I snuck it in because people leave. And when people leave, the buying, the buying pressure for, for all these altcoins, that diminishes quicker than it might for Bitcoin because Bitcoin is the blue chip and therefore alt Bitcoin pairs tend to bleed. Now, you can also look at a 30-day moving average of this metric and it cleans the data up a little bit. Sort of zooming in here, you can see the 30-day, we had a high of 1.38 million back in early 2022 and then, and then we were closer to around 1 million in, in May of 2022, and again, about 1 million in December of 2022 a day. And then by April, about 921,000. And then in August at 731,000. So you can see it's putting in lower highs. And you can also see that it's putting in lower lows, right? Like this low over here was 658. Um, we put in this low right here at 587. Currently, we're at, at 621, although there's a good chance we'll take out these prior low, this prior low in, in due time. The current the current value as of today is is in the five to six hundred thousand view range. So it's an interesting metric because it tells you you know when people are coming in or leaving the cryptoverse, right? And it's always good. It's always worthwhile to sort of clean it up with a moving average because on any given day you don't really know. I mean, it could be based on when that person just happened to release a video. But if you clean it up over say like a seven day time frame, it tends to it tends to filter out the noise. And, you know, if we were to just look at my channel, you can see that, you know, my channel to some degree has been stuck in traffic on Struggle Street in terms of maintaining viewership 
to the channel. Now, I don't monetize, you know, these views, right? I don't have AdSense turned on, but still, I mean, you can see that, it, you know, at once upon a time, this channel was getting around 300,000 views, right? And, and it could, it was getting down potentially a day, down to 40 to 50, 40 to 50K now, okay? So it's dropped quite a lot. Now, be that as it may, the YouTube views risk is the only thing holding the social risk off of zero at the current time. Go look at the, at the constituents of the social risk. YouTube subs risk is at zero. No, one's, no one really knew subscribing. Some, sometimes you, know, you might get a few people here, a few people there, but net across the channels is basically nothing. You know, no one's really, no one knew is really coming into the cryptoverse right now, which is why I've said forever, right? You know, if you're buying all coins during a phase when the social is going down, who do you think the marginal buyer is, right? If people are leaving and not coming in. Now look at Twitter analysts, right? It's a zero, basically, right? It's a zero. Twitter exchanges risk is at zero. People aren't, people aren't following. Layer ones, it's a zero. YouTube views risk 0.228. YouTube views risk still remains relatively elevated, right? I mean, you can see the general trend. It's been a downtrend, fairly consistent downtrend, and it just continues to go lower and lower and lower. I don't know if it's going to go all the way all the way to the 0 to 0.1 wristband. It would make me feel comfortable if it did because then I could say, well, you know, it's, it's, it's been depleted quite a bit. And once you hit rock bottom, the only, re the only direction really left to go is up, assuming that the, you know, sort of the, the function that accounts for growing adoption from one cycle to another is correct. Um, but that, ha that one hasn't bottomed out yet. I guess what I'm trying to say is if you could stop watching, you know, these YouTube videos, that would be great because then the social risk would actually start to go down even more. Now, what's interesting is if you look at the total social risk, in a 30-day SMA, we are about to enter the lowest risk band, okay? We're not there yet. Now, instantaneous value, we are. We're at 0 0.034 risk instantaneously. But to clean it up a little bit, because it's a, it's a stochastic process, just take a 30-day moving average and look to see where it is. We are knocking on the door of the 0 to 0.1 risk band in terms of the social risk getting there in a sustained way, not just like a spike down. Because you can see, you know, you can see that we had a spike down to these levels, you know, back in, in July, back at, you know, 31K. And then it came out of it. And now we're back in it. Now, the longer we spin here, that's where apathy starts to really set in. The reason why that's important is because markets will eventually bottom on apathy. And we talked about this previously. If you look at a lot of these prior moves with Bitcoin's price, historically, at least for the last couple of years, you know, when, when Bitcoin's price would go down, this blue line, social risk would go up, right? Price down, risk up. Price down, November 2022, risk up. Now we have price going down, but risk, social risk is also going down. So again, we, we're, we're starting to enter into this apathy stage instantaneous social risk says we're already there, but 30 day moving average, which is a good way to clean it up, still suggests that we are about to enter it. Okay. Now, last cycle, you can see that the social risk went to the zero to 0.1 wristband a few times, right? We went there in December, 2018. And in February of 2019, we also went there in October of 2019 and November of 2019, right? Price was in a downtrend in 2019, even though social risk was going back up. So what that showed us was social divergence. There were people coming into the space in late 2019 and early 2020, even though the altcoin market and Bitcoin was going down. You could see that people were starting to trickle back in and the inflows of people into the cryptoverse now exceeded the outflows. And all it took 
was a little bit of QE to kick us off into a bull run. But we were already trending in that direction. Social interest in crypto was already trending up in late 2019 and early 2020, well before QE happened. Does it not seem likely that something similar might happen again, where the social risk at some point bottoms out, starts to slowly trend back up, altcoins still bleed, and then QE comes back and we go into another bull run, likely caused by a recession. Now, I'm not suggesting that the Fed will print $6 trillion or anything like that immediately when, when we go into a recession like they did last time. But what I am suggesting is that a recession would likely cause the Fed to, to consider their, their, their QT stance and their, their high interest rate stance. And they will likely hold rates as high as they can for as long as they can just to try to bring down inflation. But there's also this other reality that at some point, they will likely pivot. Now, they're not going to pivot because your altcoin is down 98%, but they will pivot if, if the S&P starts to take a hit or if the labor market starts to take a hit. And if the labor market's taking a hit, then the S&P's taking a hit. But in reality, if the, labor's market, if the labor market's taking a hit, it's probably because the S&P already took a hit and people are cutting costs. Therefore, it leads to more layoffs, which then people see that, and then the, the S&P goes down, right? And it's sort of like this brutal cycle. But when you look at the social risk, you can see how it has been trending down and it's been putting in lower highs and lower lows since mid-2021. But in terms of the 30-day moving average of it, we are about to enter into the lowest wristband. I would suggest that the entrance into the lowest wristband will likely represent the depression phase in this cycle. It will likely represent the depression phase. The time-based capitulation. Price-based capitulation is only one part of the puzzle. You know, if, if the markets were to crash 80% and then they went straight back up, that wouldn't be painful enough for market participants to create another healthy market to lead to a more sustained bull run. What does lead to another sustained bull run is time-based capitulation where the people who, who maybe took on more risk than they should have end up becoming four sellers at a bottom, potentially in a recession or a recession scare. It's not that they want to sell, it's that they're forced to because they took on too much risk at the wrong time and they're forced to sell to pay for their other expenses. These four sellers can cause the market to behave in a way that a lot of people might not think makes sense. A lot of you probably have looked at your altcoin and you're like, well, what the hell is going on? Why does it keep going down? You know, everyone on Twitter seems relatively bullish about the altcoin market. So why does it keep going down? Remember, there's a lot of people that came in 2021 and they just bought a lot of random, a lot of random altcoins and they just keep having to sell them to sort of finance whatever, you know, whatever lifestyle they're, they're living. Okay, there are a lot of people that probably fall into this category. And, and that is a reality that we have to live with. And so when we look at this metric, we can see that a lot of that excess, even including growing adoption from one cycle to another, but a lot of that excess has been taken out. But there still might be just a little bit more to go, okay? Another few months to go. You can see last cycle, we actually did go all the way down, right? To just off of zero risk, right? Right now, we've gone down to about 0 0.0307, 0 0.0307. And the only reason we're not at zero, as I said earlier, is because the YouTube views risk is still elevated. So if this one were to roll over even harder, then this one would likely bring that social risk down to to closer to zero than it already is right and we can also imagine a scenario where in 2024 and we get the the bitcoin having coming up we can imagine a scenario where the social risk starts to go back up and then bitcoin 
leads the bull run, right? Bitcoin leads the bull run after QE comes back. Not before, after, okay? So let's just be aware of where the social risk is and, and you know, continue to monitor it, continue to see at what point does it start to show higher lows. Remember, last cycle, it started putting in higher lows before QE returned, but the market did not find its last capitulation until after QE returned. Bitcoin put in a higher low. A lot of altcoins put in lower lows. It all depends on how hawkish the Fed chooses to be on what ultimately that level will be. And I cannot tell you. People, you know, people look and say, well, you know, can you tell me if it's going to be a higher low or a double bottom or a lower low? Look, look, I don't know. I think you should be prepared for all three scenarios because it's going to depend on the reaction function of the Federal Reserve. They're more hawkish now than I've ever seen them be, okay? So you should be prepared for all three scenarios. And in the summer of 2022, I said, guys, 17 and a half is not the bottom. I didn't think it was. I said, it's either going to be the low in Q4 or the low that comes after that if we get a recession. And I don't know how that's going to materialize, okay? Last cycle, we got a recession and it was a higher low because the Fed printed quickly. The cycle before that, it was a double bottom in a recession scare, okay? So I don't know what it's going to be this time. I just want you to be open-minded and to look to the data. Look to the data to when the social risk starts to go back up. When it does, that will represent social divergence. It might still mean the prices in the short term are going down, but it would at least give us confidence that people are coming back into the cryptoverse. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. And again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com.